my mother would always say, you know, don't lose your shoes because I had one pair of shoes. You had one, one pair. pair of shoes and going to school. Well, of course, I lost the one pair in the sand. You play around and sand covers up and you don't know where your yeah. shoes are. So I remember having to go to school barefoot. Wow. Until, I, until they could take me to town and buy some shoes. Um, we'd take a lunch. It would, sometimes it would just be bread and, and butter, sometimes with sugar on it. Yeah. And it, for a real special one, it would be watercress that my mother would pick up out of little creeks that ran through, through, through uh, town. the town uh -huh. at that time. And I hated them. But that was, you know, that was, that was better than just plain old bread and butter. And uh, I can remember a girl, I can remember her name to this day. And, and that's a lot more than I can say about all the other kids I went to school with. And she had peanut butter and jam sandwiches every day. And it was like, you, you drool. Mm, you, drool. you so wanted to oh, have peanut butter that. and jam. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. My guest today is very special to me. It's Rowena Donaldson, and she's my mom. Mom. Thank you for joining me for a conversation. You're welcome. Why I wanted to chat with you is you grew up, you were very small, in the first Great Depression, and a lot of us now are facing what some folks are calling the second Great Depression. Yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's not a recession. It's a depression. And I thought there were a lot of ways that you're, you learned how to, you were raised in ways that we may get some value in learning how to, to, do, to, to live life similar to what you did back then. So give us a little setting. You were, you were six when the stock market crashed in 29. Right. Okay. So tell me, where were you living? Where was your family? What was their background? Let's start there. Well, we were living at that time in Hermosa Beach. Southern California. Yeah, Southern California. Uh, our family had come down from Canada mm -hmm. when I was two. Okay, so about 1925, they came on down. And right. They're you and your brother. And my brother, just, yes. Just an infant. My, my two aunts, my, my dad's sisters, had already come down uh -huh. here, and so they were more or less established. And so we came down around a little house in the sand. I'll never forget that house one. House in the sand. Yeah, we have, you know, well, Hermosa Beach, the sand dunes. Okay. And uh, um, so anyway, we um, were there. My dad did had learned some carpentry uh, trade mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. up in Canada. Mm -hmm. They had migrated from Scotland. His family. Right. And then, and then my grandmother's family were farming yep. people. Mm -hmm. Right. So she was a farm. Girl. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So they were both farmed, and that's how they had met. Mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But down there, I, I, when I mention sand, the first thing I think about is going to school. And my mother would always say, you know, don't lose your shoes, because I had one pair of shoes. You had one, one pair. pair of shoes. And going to school, well, of course, I lost the one pair in the sand. You play around, and sand covers up, and you don't know where your yeah. shoes are. So I remember having to go to school barefoot wow. until, I, until they could take me to town and buy some shoes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so... I bet you didn't that, do that again. That was a traumatic... I mean, that was one of the things I think that's why I became so self-conscious mm -hmm. and, and so... Oh, I don't know how I could say the word, but uh, uh, didn't want anybody to even notice me because here I was, I was so ashamed. Oh, terribly ashamed, you know, all these kids looking and the mm. teacher and all that. Um, but uh, So what did your dad, what did, what did your dad find for work? Was your mom taking care of the kids? Was mm -hmm. she working? Tell no, us about no. that. Uh, at that time, um, my mother was at home. My dad uh, would get little odd jobs. It was at that time, they would go up to a particular corner in town, you know, the men that wanted to do carpentry work. Mm -hmm. And the people that needed them would drive by and pick them up and take them to wherever they happened to be doing their, their work. 
So this could be just n not just construction crews, but people that needed some a fence at their house or, or like digging that? ditches or anything, mm -hmm. anything at mm -hmm. all, just any kind of work if they were willing to, you know, to do it. So that's how we got started in the first place, and then later my dad was hired on at what we called the tile factory, and it. Uh, Oh, I can't think of the name of it now, but they uh, later on made the Metlocks pottery. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, so he, he worked nights operating a kiln. Yeah. And uh, so that was a, a better time for us, although it was still uh, very difficult. I mean, things were not cheap, and you really thought twice before you put out a penny. And pennies were, you could buy a lot for a penny. What could you buy for a penny? Well, two cents, you could buy a bunch of carrots or a bunch of beets or turnips. Really? Yes, two okay. cents a bunch. I mean, I remember that. And bread was something like seven cents mm -hmm. a loaf. I mean, there was you know, a lot of things that you could do there. And of course, we were town. But uh, almost, as long as I can remember, we had chickens. In your backyard? In our backyard. And sometimes uh, ducks. I remember mother having, she liked the duck eggs to bake with. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I'm just thinking, you know, think about that type of thing where when going to school, um, we'd take a lunch and uh, it would sometimes, it would just be bread and, and butter. Sometimes with sugar on it, yeah. and for a real special one, it would be watercress that my mother would pick out out of little creeks that ran through through the, uh, town. the town uh -huh. at that time, and I hated them. <laughs> 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 but that was you know that was that That's was sweet. better than just plain old bread and butter. And uh, I can remember a girl. I can remember her name to this day. And, and that's a lot more than I can say about all the other kids I went to school with. And she had peanut butter and jam sandwiches every day. And it was like, you, you drool. Mm, you, drool. you so wanted to oh, have peanut butter that. and jam. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. One of the things, though, at that particular school that was in Manhattan Beach then, was um, one of the teachers got whole milk. Of course, it was raw milk at that time. It was good milk. And she brought it in a jar. And we took turns shaking the, the the jar to make butter. Ooh. And and then she, you know, separated it all out and we had she had cut bread into quarters mm. and put butter on them so that we each got to taste what real butter tasted like, you know, that you had done How yourself. How exciting. Yes. How exciting. Yes. Actually, that gave you partly was part of why you got a lifelong taste for butter because oh. you raised us on butter. Right. Tell us what the what else there was. Well, somewhere along the line, I'm not even sure when, they came out with oleomargarine. And that was this white hunk of <laughs> grease. <laughs> and the first ones came out, it was, I think it was Nuco, and it came out with a little paper thing with yellow coloring in it. And you broke it up and you stirred it and stirred mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. until it all got the color. And then I think Delrich was the other name of it, and it came out with a little, a little like a little bead that was filled with coloring, mm -hmm. and it was in a plastic bag, and you broke that, and then you kneaded that. Oh, I love to do that. I just thought that was the greatest thing to bring the color into it, and then to squeeze it and make it that way. But I would not eat it. Mm. I tasted it once, and it was horrible. I, who would they? wants to eat that. I mean, <laughs> butter, you know, it had a nice flavor and mm -hmm. I knew it was good, but the margarine, I never, I never could. I never would buy it, even though it was supposed to be a lot cheaper and it was supposed to be as good for you. To me, it wasn't. I think you were ahead of your time, oh, your yes. instincts, your body yeah. knew it. Yeah. And you said your, your mom had chickens and sometimes oh. ducks in the backyard. Now, for, for the eggs? For the eggs. Did you also eat the animals? And after, uh, yeah, after they quit laying, mm -hmm. yeah, we'd have mm -hmm. Stew, chicken stew, because usually the hens were quite old by that time, and that's mm -hmm. what we would have. And the ducks, the same thing. I mean, it was that. When uh, my mother and dad separated, that was, oh, I can't remember exactly. I think I was probably about eight. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we moved to Inglewood, and she had to make a living some way because she was not, we didn't get support from my dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, she started making chicken pies for restaurants and just going to different restaurants and selling them. They were just small, little mm -hmm. individual mm -hmm. ones. Right. And uh, so 
So we had the chickens in, in the yard that she would buy. She would kill, and we would help her pluck them. For years, I could not eat chicken mm -hmm. because all mm -hmm. I could do is smell mm -hmm. that smell. Mm -hmm. But that was how mm -hmm. she you know, was able to bring money in. And then uh, she met this uh, fellow that was starting up a pie company. They were from Germany, a family. And um, the brother, there were three brothers, and they started up this pie company. And they made the best pies that I have ever tasted in my life. Ever, ever. Ever, ever. Better wow. than any homemade pie. Mm. They made them, made the uh, crust with lard. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. all of the um, fillings were real, real. I mean. Real food. <laughs> real food. Eggs uh, were whole eggs and uh, whipping cream. Mm. And mm. Just everything was real. You know, there was no artificial things. It was, it was just what you do at home. But he was doing it, you know, as, as uh, a way of making the pies. Uh, he asked my mother if she would like to see if she could sell pies to these restaurants that she was selling the chicken pies to. Well, she did that, and pretty soon she didn't have to make the chicken pies anymore. She was able to make enough just mm -hmm. by uh, selling pies to restaurants. And that developed into the largest pie route that this person had wow. and the others he had hired drivers and they have different areas but she was uh, her own boss she mm -hmm. bought the pies mm -hmm. and sold them and uh, so it was it was a, a good real good way for a living but that was seven days a week at that time wow so wow. Uh, um, as soon as uh, <laughs> my brother arrived it was mostly me first because being the oldest um, had to go along and help her. Mm -hmm. So early on we were carrying pies mm -hmm. and and I can remember the pies, a nine inch pie was 28 cents and a 10 inch pie was 35 cents. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And different, different economics. Yeah. And of course that, I can't remember, at first I don't remember, but you know, along when I was running the pie route by myself, because that, as soon as I got my driver's license, I was off by myself, mm -hmm. so I would give her a day off or mm -hmm. two days off, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. especially when I wasn't in school. And, um, but so I want to go back for a second. This is, you were living on just cash. I mean, we're not oh. talking about families that could live on credit. Mm -mm. Nope. Um, and, and so you had, you had to live within your means. You, that's it. I mean, totally. Yep. And if you didn't have the money for food, well, you did without or you ate whatever was around. I can remember one instance when one of the uh, drivers that uh, worked for the pie company uh, came over and he had two big bags of groceries and he was a single man and he said, Ruby, I need, I need a good homemade meal. I'm tired of eating in the restaurants, is how he put it. And he brought enough groceries for us for a week. Mm -hmm. But it was his way, because he knew how, you know, how, how tight things were. For sure. So that For was sure. his way of, of helping out. So, yeah. Since this was, I mean, I, since your mom was a, a farm girl, I expect that she did, did she do some canning? Did she do any kind of preservation of foods uh, here? Some, because when she, she had time. Because yeah. you did. I mean, you brought that oh, yeah. into our family. Right. It was something that yeah. you had already learned somehow. Well, they, of occasion. course, uh, when they were in Canada, this is what they did. They, you know, had their crops that they could store in the winter time. You know, I guess it was the potatoes and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then they canned whatever came ripe. They canned, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. she did as much as she could when she could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was a hard one. So, 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 the, tell me about Granddaddy. He built a house, right? I, or, or, or more than one. I mean, he did he, some construction. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. He, uh, when he went out on his own, he built some commercial buildings, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, he built his own little house. And then uh, my sister was born after they got here, and uh, he helped her build her house. Mm -hmm. And she even was pregnant, and she was still up there putting the roof on hers because mm -hmm. he did teach us a lot of skills with using our hands, using tools. Mm -hmm. Some of my first memories of, he fixed a wood lathe for us out in the backyard. And so we turned wood 
Mm -hmm. like, on the lathes, yeah, yeah, right. yeah on, on the lathes, right. and you know, made designs and things, mm -hmm. and that was, oh, we weren't very old then at all. But, you know, you were comfortable working oh, with those yeah. construction tools, and probably, I would guess, a lot of the house repair and stuff, oh, you, yeah. I mean, he did, or you did, or you learned yeah. how to. And my mother learned uh -huh. how. Okay. I mean, that was one of the things that we, you know, when something went wrong, you fixed it. She could do anything you know, with plumbing or electrical or whatever that needed to be done because who do you ask? You know, you don't have any money to go hire someone, so you learn what to do. Wow, that's so, a very different practice than we see these days. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I would also guess since, since you were living, you know, just with whatever means you had all along yeah. the way, what did you do? What did you do for fun, for entertainment? Oh, we had all kinds of fun. Um, well, I guess some of the first things I remember in in uh, just doing things on our own, cutting out paper dolls mm. out of the newspaper. They'd have you know the girl, and then they'd have the clothes that you put on. This is on, already printed on. Oh, already on, printed. On newspaper, yeah, right, yeah. Tilly the toiler. I, that's one I remember, <laughs> and I can't remember the other one. And you would. Um, um, play with those, you know, and trade with different people. And you know, there was always a new one every Sunday that came out in the Sunday paper. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, one of the things I love to do, take a square of toilet paper and you fold it all up and you cut different ways. So it ended up looking like a, a little like lacy a thing, like a snowflake. And then cigarettes used to come in a tin of mm -hmm. 20 and those the uh, papers fit in that perfectly, so I'd save those. Those were oh, precious. And another thing that we did was uh, milk. Of course, came in a uh, quart bottle, and it was larger, and then it came smaller, and then it had a little cardboard cap. Well, we saved those, and then once in a while we could see a milk man, and he'd give us some that hadn't been used. And we had a game where we took it and we pushed, slammed them down on the ground. And if somebody came along, and the next person and went on top of yours, he got yours. Oh, so, so that, like pick up sticks, kind of. Or, yeah. Or the, yes. So that we that was that was another game. Uh, jacks, of course, loved jacks, and we'd play so much on sidewalks that you'd wear your fingernails all the way down on the sides. <laughs> and jump rope, of course. And when we were old enough, it was double dutch with a two mm -hmm. two. And we and you jump were, on that. And you were near you were near the beach, so you also went to the oh, beach, right? And I, yes. And when we were, when we were all still together as a family, my dad would and when he'd get home from work, it would just be about sundown, and he, we would walk down to the ocean to see the sunset. Ah, and nice. yeah, so I've always felt real close to the ocean because of That's that. It. it was it was special. Tell me about the crystal radio. Well, that was some place, somewhere between, before they separated that my dad worked out in the garage and he finally got made this crystal set, I think is how they put it. So he received, you could receive the radio on that. Wow. And it was fascinating. How can, how can you can do this? How can it, it happen that you can hear something? Somebody's mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. about way, way. Mm -hmm. But of course, the other side of that was my two aunts. I remember a discussion about that, how they're saying, what was radio waves going to be doing to our bodies? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. here, this mm -hmm. invisible ray out there, what was going to happen? I can remember that thinking, well, how does that happen? How does yeah, that work? Yeah, or what is happening? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. They were they were way ahead of their time thinking yeah. about radio waves. And of course, we've got now X-rays and cell phones and all kinds of right. other bombardment. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I remember, uh, we had a Philco radio that came up and went did mm -hmm. this sort of this shape, and we listened to oh, somebody's boy detective. I can't remember now what the name was, but. Um, Different different radio programs and the dramas, right, oh, and the comedy, yeah. and drama. Amos and Andy, I can remember those. But it was just it was fascinating. It was just fascinating to hear this story. It ran for half an hour, and it was like, oh, don't stop, don't we? Don't, because it leaves you in suspense. So, uh, I, oh, Jack Armstrong, the All American Boy, that was another one. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those those were special. That was fun for us. We we entertained ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was mm -hmm. no two ways about it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, my dad made stilts for us mm -hmm. so that we play with stilts. The other things that I was thinking about, other crafts that your mom probably cultivated, 
Did she sew or knit or any of those kinds? Did sewed, you make your clothes? Knit, she Did crocheted. You uh, oh, talk about making clothes. At, at, you know, at first things were really, really tight when we were, mm -hmm. when we first left there. My mother made my underpants out of flour sacks. And of course, dish towels were out of flour sacks. Right. And um, I remember one time when the stitching came out at the bottom of the, the pants, and so it was like I didn't have any underpants on. <laughs> oh, God. of course, dress, dresses were just above your knees. Oh, that was painful until I got home from school <laughs> to get, get, some, get some underpants on. So you yeah. learned to sew? I learned to sew. Uh, I learned. Later, my sister started earlier because she she she. This is when we were teens, that she she wanted a new skirt to go someplace, so she whip it up in the afternoon to wear it that night. Wow! Oh, she she was really the sewer. I learned to knit. I learned to crochet, which I loved. And embroidery. Embroid. Oh yeah, embroidery. Yeah, and uh, so we did. We made most everything, uh, and. My mother would get a lot of hand-me-downs mm -hmm. because of going to these different restaurants. She you know, would know the people, and when she, when there was nobody to take care of us, she would take us with her, on, so the people, you know, were they acquainted knew. with us. Right. So we got a lot of hand-me-downs, and I'm still happy with hand-me-downs. You, you can give me a hand-me-down any time. I mean, it's they're fine. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. but it was one of the things that. Uh, did help That's out the, tremendously. For sure. I mean, as we are now using thrift stores yeah. to do, to oh, do yes. that. Oh, yes. Same thing. So in our last five minutes, believe it or not, <laughs> it goes quickly, doesn't it? Yes. I want to talk about sort of the values, the sort of the life practices that you learned, one of which is frugality, because you, you engendered that to my sister and I, mm -hmm. about being very um, not wasteful. Right. I remember we had to belong to the Clean Plate Club if we got to have dessert. Yeah, right. We didn't. I mean, we weren't allowed to be wasteful. So, no. those kind of values that you know you brought that that shaped your life. Right. You also used to shape our lives. You didn't. I don't think you you masked it. No, no, because I, we didn't try to be anything more than what we were. Mm -hmm. We didn't try to put in airs. And when we moved to Los Aldos, which was more of an affluent area, it was still. I couldn't do any differently than what I did. I think our biggest um, expense, or, or that wouldn't be what I'd call it, but the, the thing that we did that I think shaped your life a lot more was by having a boat yeah. and yeah. water skiing. Mm -hmm. And that kept the family together. Yeah, we. Because we were doing things together that, you know, it was. It was a, a whole family unit, yeah, and right. I, I, I count that as something that I w is an in inestimable treasure because we got to be outdoors, we got to be in our bodies and active, and we got to be in wilder country. Mm -hmm. And we got I, camping. I, I found that I could how little one could live on. Oh yes, you know we yeah. had the chuck box that Dad had built. I mean, my dad followed in 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 your dad's steps yes. in terms of. He built that boat. We didn't have the money to go no. buy a boat, no. and he built it. And, and yeah. Granddaddy helped, you know, yeah. teach him things. Right. And much and much later, in in my teenage years, Granddaddy and Daddy built the house that my sister now lives in, and we all helped yeah, build it. Yeah, we all, so did, we it, all worked on it, that. You know, I watched those skills being passed from generation to generation, mm -hmm. such that Robin and I did a lot of that with your 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 brother. I mean, I'm, it's just. Something that I value mm -hmm. is that's kind of self-reliance yeah. and, yeah. and not, not a fear about it. You can do it. Oh, sure. Yeah. And uh, one of the things, you know, talking about money, um, we, we never had a credit card. Uh, I don't even remember when we got a credit card, but it was, oh, I, I think it was long after your dad and I uh, separated. So we're looking in the 80s. Somewhere up in there is the first time that, wow. uh, but uh, everything, you know, we saved up it was cash. We paid for the house, but, you know, that way, and mm -hmm. uh, we did have a GI loan for that. We were able to do that, mm -hmm. and uh, insurance. We didn't have any health insurance until, oh gosh, when would it have been? It was it was in the uh, late fifties, I think. It finally got for your dad. Mm -hmm. Because if anything, you know, happened to him, because mm -hmm. he was the breadwinner. Life insurance. Yeah, right. because he worked, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I raised, raised you, you, know, you kids, mm -hmm. and um, 
I did take a job, one job at Sears at one point, but it was so difficult because I wanted to be sure that you guys were taken care of, although that's where you learn to cook because right. you could say, okay, put the chicken and put the potatoes and all in the oven. Yeah. And, you know, so you, that's when it you was, started cooking. It was useful to us. Oh, yes. So there were benefits. So, that's yeah. right. So it didn't feel like deprivation. I mean, never, never. Even though, I mean, for you as a kid, that's how you lived. And so oh, even sure. though you longed for that peanut butter sandwich, yeah. <laughs> it didn't, didn't sound like you felt like you went to bed hungry very oh, often. Oh, or never, no, never, never, mm -hmm. yeah. And people were good to you. Oh. And good to each other. Yes, good very to good other. to each other, yes. That was the thing about it. People helped each other. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. well, most of them were in the same fix, you know. They were, sure. They were all you know, hunting for jobs and trying to make money. So, yeah, it's, a, it, it's going to get back to that. That's what I'm afraid, and it's going to be real hard for people that have indulged their children so much with all the little gadgets and gadgets and things. It's going to be real hard for them because those those children are going to have to learn to be more self-sufficient and not depend on mom and dad to buy everything for them. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just it'll just be a different world for them. So. Got any other advice for them? For for let's let's say a twenty year old now, or a family now. Living live within your means. Mm. That's the big one. I mean, mm. live within your means. Don't charge a thing. I mean, throw away all your credit cards. Mm -hmm. Pay pay things in cash. If you don't have it, then you do without. You do without. You didn't need it. That's mm. Basically, you mm. didn't need it. Sounds like there's a whole lot of things that we all have or think that we need to have. I mean, sort. All, that we really don't need. Right. Need your basic thing that you need is food, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and well, of course it helps to have a house over your, you some know, shelter, yeah, yep. roof over yep. your head. But um, yeah, you can do without a lot of things. And like I mentioned about hand-me-down clothes, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, or hand-me-down furniture. There's there's mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty much what I would say to people now. Thank you. You're Thank you. I think that we're, I think that the generations ahead may turn back and look at what your yeah. generation went through and say, hmm, this is pretty similar. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. Pretty similar. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. It's been sweet to do yeah. this with you. Yeah. Hasn't it been nice to meet my mom? <laughs> this is my mom, Rowena Donaldson. Yeah. I'm Janae Donaldson. You're watching Peak Moment. For me, this is a peak moment. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah.